Well, good morning and welcome for joining me once again for story time with Joyce, and that's me. And we're reading from the book, Betty. And last week we read chapter seven, which was titled Serena. Betty had met Serena and Serena took her to a, an employment agency. Back then it was a domestic agency and she uh, has been sent to a home, Dr. Russell, to possibly watch two four-year-old twins, Cora and Tommy. So today she is about to embark on a new adventure and she's going to Dr. Russell's home to see if he has uh, he approves of her. So let's read. The early morning sounds of the city woke Betty. She looked around and saw Arvin was already gone. She wondered why he didn't wake her up to get his breakfast. Pulling out one of her better cotton dresses, she washed up and put it on. When she got to the kitchen to check in with Mary, she found out that Arvin had stopped in for some of her biscuits she had made the night before. Betty grabbed some herself and met Serena. Serena, thanks for taking me to the streetcar. There's no streetcars where I come from. I'm so nervous, Betty said. You'll be fine. Anyone who can take a train to an unknown place is brave, Serena re uh, replied, reassuring Betty. Thanks for the encouragement. I don't feel very brave, Betty said apprehensively. Betty, this is my stop. This is where I get off. Now remember, the next stop, time the streetcar stops, that's your stop. So... As Serena left the trolley, she waved back and said, good luck. Thanks, Betty said loudly. Betty sat on the edge of her seat waiting for the trolley to stop. She was worried she would miss it or not get off in time. When it did stop, Betty sprung up from her seat, just like one of those toys when wound up, a clown pops out of a spring. She grabbed a hold of the pole by the door and carefully stepped down onto the two steps and off into the street. Betty's mind started to have all kinds of racing, questioning thoughts. Oh dear, so many people walking every which way. I got, I, I got off all right. Now to find the right number house. I don't know if I can do this. The houses are big, bigger than the ones by the settlement house. What did Marie say? The house was yellow and gray and the number was 45. I sure hope I'm going the right way. So much noise. I've been walking a while now. Oh, where is that house? There? No, it's yellow, all right, but no gray. I'm getting scared. There's another yellow house. Oh, please let that be the house. 45. This is it. Betty nervously walked up the two steps and knocked on the door. She was shaking inside and wasn't sure if her knees were knocking together or if it was the wind blowing the bottom of her skirt. The door opened and a man in his late 20s opened the door. Dr. Russell, Betty quickly asked, you must be the lady that the agency sent over. Come in, Dr. Russell said. Thank you, Betty said politely. Your name is Mrs. Jameson, Betty Jameson, is that right? Yes, Betty replied. How old are you, Mrs. Jameson? 18, but I'll be 19 in a couple months. Marie told me you helped your mom with your siblings and that you can also cook, is that right? Yes, I took care of my little brothers and sisters and I'm a fair cook. Fried chicken is my favorite thing to fix. That sounds good, I can't wait to try some. Cora, Tommy, come meet Mrs. Jameson. Dr. Russell responded with a smile on his face. Are you gonna be my new mama? Cora asked. No, Mrs. Jameson is going to watch you while I am at the hospital, and she fixes fried chicken, your favorite, Dr. Russell said. Yay, both twins squealed in unison. Do you want to play, Tommy asked excitedly. Dr. Russell, do you want me to stay today, Betty asked. Yes, I think you are perfect for our family. I'm not working today, so I'll show you where everything is and you can get to know Cora and Tommy. I work at Mercy Hospital, which is on the outskirts of the city. Did Marie tell you that you would be working five days a week and weekends sometimes falls within those five days? My work shift changes each week. She probably did. I was so excited about getting a job that I didn't hear every word she said. But the schedule is just fine. Mrs. Jamison, I hope you still feel that way after spending a week with the twins. Betty did stay the day and got the lay of the land. Playing with Cora and Tommy was a delight. They were both very well-mannered and behaved. 
She did make her fried chicken and they all voted it was the best fried chicken they had ever had. Fried chicken was added to the weekly menu of dinners. At the end of the day, Dr. Russell and the twins walked Betty to the streetcar and said goodbye. As Betty climbed the stairs, about being in the city. On the ride back to the settlement house, she replayed the day in her mind. She was thinking how so much had changed for her in the last couple of days. Betty was trying to sort out her feelings when she realized the trolley was coming to her stop. She stepped out on down onto the street and walked back to the settlement house with a little bounce in her step. Yep, she was feeling better about being in the city. She couldn't wait to tell Arvin Betty saw Arvin standing outside the settlement house, just looking around. Excitedly, Betty approached him and said, Arvin, I can't wait to tell you about my day. Arvin, not really listening to what Betty said, replied, Isn't the city excited? Learning the machines is also exciting. Even though we've only been here a couple of days, I feel like I've been here, I've always been here. Met some guys who are from Indiana and Ohio. I guess we all had the same city dreams. Let's get some of that great food you prepared in the kitchen. Betty tried again to get Arvin's attention. Arvin, I want to tell you all about Dr. Russell and the twins. Later, Betty, I'm hungry and tired, Arvin said. With that, Arvin went into the settlement house, walked toward the kitchen with Betty trailing him. Upon entering the kitchen, he grabbed a tray, some food, found an empty table, and plopped down on one of the chairs. Betty joined him and they both ate in silence. Just as Betty was finishing up with her supper, Serena came over to their table. Arvin excused himself and went outside to talk to some fellas he knew from the factory. Betty, how did your day go? Serena asked. Dr. Russell is so nice and the twins are really well behaved. I can't thank you enough for taking me to the agency. How was your day? Betty asked. Same. I clean for a family, Mr. and Mrs. White, and do their cooking as well. They have a nanny for their three kids. One of the kids is touched in the head. That nanny has her hands full. So glad I only have to cook and clean. Enough about me. What did Arvin say about your new job? Serena inquired. He was too busy telling me about his and about how hungry and tired he was. We used to spend time together and even did some of our farm chores together. The last two days, I feel like I'm a, with a stranger. Things will get better. Things are all new to both of you. It took me a couple of weeks to get settled in. It seems like you've gotten settled into the kitchen all right. Everybody really liked those apple pies you made. Betty, when did you have time to make apple pies? I made them early this morning. You saw the apples last night and remembered my mama's pies. I miss my home, Serena. Arvin's parents gave us a parcel of land to live on and farm. After a year, Arvin just couldn't do it anymore. He had to go to the city. I knew that he had city dreams before I married him, so I didn't complain, and I helped close up our house and our land, and here we are. Like I said, things will get better. It's getting better. It's getting late. I best get to bed. You should go too, Serena said. You're right. See you in the morning, Betty replied. Good night, Betty, Serena said as she walked toward the hall on her way to retire. Betty bid Serena good night and once again felt left out. She thought even though Arvin was never much of a talker, at least they had shown he had shown interest in what she did. Now it seems he's only inter interested in what he does and what he wants to talk about to anybody who will listen to him. Betty went to their room. Arvin was still outside talking with the fellas from the factory. She fell asleep the minute her head hit, head hit the pillow. She never heard Arvin come in and climb into bed, nor feel his kiss goodnight. So next week, we'll be reading chapter nine. And if you'd like to pick up a copy of Betty, you can go to Amazon.com and look for Betty, written by Joyce Bennett Hall. Or you can go to my website, JoyceBennettHall.com. See you next week and have a great week. Bye-bye.